Hey guys, a wonderful good morning from Tunisia. It is 4 a.m. and I'll be flying their flag carrier Tunis Air on an Airbus A330 in business class all the way to Paris, an airline that has been on my list for uh, a long time and now I finally get to fly it. Flight time is around two and a half hours and there wasn't much to find on the internet about Tunis Air so that makes me even more wanting to try it today. Uh, Check-in was, yeah, easy there's not much happening at the airport it's not that busy especially in the morning and uh, yeah I'm gonna head to the lounge now I'm gonna check out and see what the Tunis Air Lounge has to offer here and then we off to Paris so let's do this So Tunisia is mainly a holiday destination. It's a lot of Germans come here actually to spend a few times at the beach. Um, and this is also where the Arab Spring actually originated and started from, which then triggered and spread all over the Arab world. FYI. And some people may call this sales offices, but this, or, this is the wall of airlines I really want to try. Africa Airways. Uh, well, Saudi I did, Turkish I did recently as well, but like also really high on my list, Royal Air Maroc, especially the Dreamliner, um, did Royal, Royal Jordanian I did, and an airline, I don't even know whether they exist, Libyan, Libyan Airlines, and also very interesting, Air Algeria, oh my god, I wish things go back to normal very soon so I can like, go on all these adventures that are awaiting us post corona. So yeah I've checked in already and I'd like to proceed to the lounge but it's still very early in the morning that departure area is actually still closed so you can't clear uh, security just yet um, but I hope it's gonna happen soon so I can show you guys the lounge. So cleared immigration, I've cleared customs and now I am looking for the lounge. I've found the priority pass lounge but I bet it's still, it's still up. You must have a Tunis Air lounge here somewhere. So I'm actually at the lounge, but there's nobody here. Not even anyone at the counter. <laughs> yeah, there's no stuff here. I mean, here I came through this door. So apparently, if you come to Tunis, uh, the lounge is open to everybody. I mean, there are traces of human beings here. Some leftover food. Hello. So yeah, there's nobody to be seen anywhere. There's some leftover office work. <laughs> yeah. And some ashtray. It looks like there was a party happening here and they forgot to, to clean up after themselves. <laughs> All right, nothing to eat, I guess. So yeah, that's the lounge. <laughs> Makes no sense. I mean, I've seen a lot in all those years of flying, but never seen an abandoned lounge. Where do I get a coffee now though? That's the big question. Definitely not at the lounge. All right. So and while the sun is rising, this is my bird today, the Airbus 330-200. They have two, it's the only white bodies they have in their fleet and predominantly they're using it for their flights to Montreal, Canada. If you were wondering. Morning. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. 
So guys, this is it. Welcome on board Tunis Air Airbus A330, their flagship more or less. Um, the business class comes with 24 seats in a 2-2-2 two, two, two configuration. The bed doesn't go flat, it's an angled flat bed. Maybe not ideal for a long transatlantic flight. And let me give you a quick little um, seat tour here. So you get an entertainment screen right in front of you, which hasn't been started yet. So I'm going to talk you through the entertainment um, once we airborne. Get a reading light. This is like the privacy divider, and that's what you have. So USB audio is all right here. Then there is a power outlet, uh, remote control is kept here in your armrest where I was actually expecting the table. Also your seat controls are kept right here and now the big question is actually where's the table kept? That's interesting. I, oh it's here? <laughs> oh that's interesting. <laughs> yeah that's funny the, the crew just noticed that I was looking for the table so she pointed it out. So the table is kept right here. I mean, I've seen a lot of different seats, um, but this is also new for me. So it's actually not too bad of a location. First impression, crew's really lovely, nice impression. They're doing a, doing a, did a great job at the door, greeting everyone, and uh, yeah, I have, I have a good feeling about this. I do. also something quite interesting maybe you've noticed the the curtain here or um, so you can enclose those two seats in the back which is usually used as a crew rest or like more particular a rest for the pilots on transatlantic flights where they have like three or four pilots on board because the 330-200 usually doesn't come with a crew rest learn something new today did you know that usually they're kept like right in the back, like on the right side. That's what I've seen most of the times on the Airbus 330s. Um, but here it's kept in the middle. So door just been closed. We are supposed to be airborne in one minute, but it still looks like that we're gonna have an on-time departure. Um, also something I've noticed is at the security check as well as in the jet bridge I was twice asked by a police officer whether I have any currency or any money on me but it didn't seem like they were asking for a bribe or anything like that it was more like that you might perhaps be not able to take money out of the country or a local currency if you know what well, that's it let me know in the comment section below So one fact that I find is a bit disturbing is that the safety video was only shown in French and Arabic, um, so there was no English version, which is very questionable. A bit of a bit of a safety flaw right there. Uh, Tunis Air, if you're watching, that is uh, a bit of an issue. first call of action after the seatbelt sign was switched off was that the crew was giving out blankets. So if there's one thing I don't understand at the moment is like airlines are so vocal about how intense and how hard they clean the cabins at the moment but this plane is absolutely filthy dirty. I mean look at those windows. Look at the screen like all the surfaces that are 
that you usually touch quite frequently, like a super, super dirty and filthy. Don't know whether there's only Tunis Air, but I've seen more posts like this. Also, Tunis Air is an international airline, and all announcements, everything is just in French uh, and Arabic. Nothing in English. So they were also giving out this form here, and it's all in French. I have no idea what it is. No safety video in English, nothing. I don't know, <laughs> it's weird. So, and this is what we're being served here. Uh, a breakfast box with a yogurt drink, cookies, cheese, uh, a muffin, some water, orange juice, as well as a coffee. I don't know. I know my content is not very appealing to like professors or doctors. Uh, I don't know, for me this is mainly cost cutting. It is like, I mean, surfaces are being touched, boxes are being touched. I don't know what the problem is to still have normal service. Heat something up, put it in here, serve it. Halas, done, finished. Yeah. There's so many airlines, so Qatar Airlines still does like full service. Warm meals, whatever. I think airlines are always very quick to jump on this opportunity wherever they can save some money. Like from a hygienic point of view, I don't think it's making much of a difference. It's still being touched, it's still being served. In the end, it's just airlines being cheap. That is like my, my point of view, unless somebody can really prove me otherwise, but I don't see much of a difference what the issue is of putting a hot meal inside here. And it's not a must, it's a recommendation. Like the IATA has recommended or has like put out some guidelines where they said do this and this. It is not like it's binding or it's not forced or enforced, it's not a law, it's not a rule, it's recommendations. Anyways, let's see. Uh, what this tastes like. It doesn't look very welcoming though. I'd also love to have someone explain me the logic. <laughs> there is cheese, but no bread. I mean, who eats cheese with a muffin? I don't. I bet the majority of you guys doesn't do that either. And you have cookies, Event. Like they don't even like. There's not even any system. It's systematically wrong. Everything they do here, cheese. You don't eat cheese with muffins or with cookies. You eat cheese with bread or crackers. Oh dear. At least if you do lunch boxes, do them right. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even. I'm not even complaining. But it's just like you make lunch boxes. At least it should make sense. Who eats muffin with cheese? Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, are you trying to make sense of it? Muffin, <laughs> muffin with cheese and a yogurt drink. Muffin with cheese and a yogurt drink. That is that is twenty twenty. <laughs> hilarious. Also, we have no working in-flight entertainment. I'd love to show you the in-flight entertainment, but yeah, it's not working. You have though one, two, three screens in front which show the flight map and uh, occasionally one photo of a beach with a palm tree. But uh, other than that, yeah. That's it. Well, you have magazines, like, like once again, magazines. Why do you leave it in the aircraft? Like, if you're so worried about people touching the same surface, those magazines are here. The person prior me probably touches it. I'm gonna touch it. The person who's gonna sit here after me is gonna touch it. Why? Remember the times when it was beef or chicken? Now we have, Monsieur, do you want a cookie with cheese? Or would you rather try cheese on muffin? <laughs> now let's see how angled the flat bed is. So I'm uh, gonna go angled flat now.
so this is what it looks like when you are angled flat it's not too bad it gets a bit steep towards your legs um, but um, from my experience I usually sleep much better when there's a bit of an angle what I do find a bit weird is though there's no real divider this is it here that is static so you can't pull it out either so I guess if there's somebody sitting next to you that would be a bit uncomfortable on a long flight especially when you sleep like there's nothing weirder than having people look at you while you're having a nap or while you go for sleep and I also hope there's a better blanket because the blanket they were giving out is just like a like a day flight kind of blanket so it'd be interesting to know whether they have like uh, proper bedding or not I think it's a complete different experience uh, I'm not even sure whether Tunis Air flies anywhere to Asia but they got to utilize those 330s somewhere so I guess Montreal and they use this bird to Paris a lot uh, but yeah otherwise I don't know but yeah this is it I'm really impressed by the speed though it goes flat in like a few seconds that must be definitely the fastest seat I've ever experienced it's pretty cool so also welcome to the Louvre review uh, nothing spectacular the same amenities as you know from many other Louvres I've reviewed got two mirrors uh, no special amenities Now I'd say it's fairly clean. So I went to the economy class real quick and uh, yeah, it all comes with uh, personal entertainment foldable table and quite of a generous uh, seat pitch in a 242 configuration uh, 242 seats here but also like you've got a USB um, a hook and a recline yeah and this is the recline situation here Looks like a pretty nice economy class and actually the screen looks pretty big but I have no idea why the uh, in-flight entertainment isn't working on this flight but nice views though nice big view well now let's go back to my seat So we also just started our descent into Orly. Uh, never flew actually into Orly. I think this is where most of the budget airlines fly to. Uh, I'm only know Charles de Gaulle, as many of you. Um, so let's see what that one is going to be like. leaving the plane and nobody else <laughs> that is strange oh no no they're coming well hello to or welcome to Paris so while waiting for my luggage let me tell you about the flight uh, something I like the crew was very lovely very helpful kind interested um, they done a, a nice job, very kind people. Uh, what I didn't like is like no announcements in English. The food, we talked about it on the flight and that the airplane was pretty filthy. That is uh, something that, wasn't, that was nice to see. Otherwise, I enjoyed it. 
it's nice. It was, it's a lovely product. Though on a like 11 hour flight, I wasn't, I'm not sure about it, but I'd like to see it, what it is like under normal circumstances, especially the food and everything. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's it for the for today. That was Toonies Aero Business Class Airbus A330 review. But yeah, if you enjoyed today's video, give it a like. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what you think about my comments uh, I had, or the opinions I shared. Whether you agree or disagree. And if you haven't if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you hit that subscribe button? And if you're subscribed, why don't you hit that notification bell so every time I post a new video, you get a notification. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And wherever you're off to. Have a safe trip. And guys, I'm also about to hit 300,000 subscribers. Yes, this is how big our little family already is. And a huge thank you. It means the world every time I see a new subscriber. And also a big thank you to my patrons who are supporting me every month. And to celebrate this milestone, I'm gonna give away this little model here of Atlantic Airways. So how you can win this and how you can participate, you have to go to my Instagram because this is where I'm gonna host uh, this giveaway. So watch out for my post next week. Yeah, guys, thank you so much for being part of my journey. I love all of you. See ya.